Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Devyani and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something very important and very relevant to all international students, which is the student visa process. So this is going to be a super long video because I'm going to be explaining everything in detail and that's why I'm going to be dividing this video into two parts. So this is the part one of the video and part two, I'm going to be adding in the description box below and also at the end of this video. So in this part one video, I'm going to be covering everything from how to get your offer letter, cash number, your bank statements, your tuberculosis test, the documents you need and all of that. So in the part two of the video, I'm going to be talking about how to do the visa application process, what all you need to submit, how does the visa day look like. And also going to be sharing a very important story of my friend who went to Middlesex University and he had to give like a couple of interviews before he got his visa. So it was like a very lengthy process and very complicated process for him. So I'm going to be sharing that and also how to get a BRP and stuff like that. So just to give you guys a disclaimer, I'm not going to be covering anything about a loan in this video. I'm making a very specific video for that later. So please stay tuned. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. If you find this helpful, please do like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's just get into it. So just to give you guys a background, I am from Pune. I did my bachelor's from Jehan College, Mumbai and I applied to King's College London in the UK. So my experiences and how the process looks like may come from how I have applied to King's College London from Pune and it might vary for you, but more or less it's going to be the same. So if you have any further questions, don't worry about it. Do comment below and I'll make sure I respond to all of them. So let's just get into it. So the process begins when you get your offer letter. Now most often than not, everybody gets a conditional offer letter. That is when you still have to submit your some documents like your IELTS marks or your final degree certificate or things like that. And after you have satisfied all of the requirements, you get an unconditional offer. So that is when the university is like, yes, okay, she has submitted everything, he has submitted everything and we can go ahead with the process. Only after you get your unconditional offer, they issue a CAS number for you. So what is a CAS number? A CAS number is a confirmation of acceptance of studies number, which a university provides for you, which is a unique identification ID. So without your CAS number, you cannot apply for your visa because while you start your visa application process in that form, the very first thing they ask you is for your CAS number. So you have to wait until you get your CAS number. So for universities like King's College London, they do a thing called pre-CAS. It is not necessarily that you will have it at your university, but King's does. So I'm just going to tell you about it. So pre-CAS is essentially when they review your documents, your name, your father's name, and they match your passport details to your degree certificate and everything. They make sure that everything is final before they issue your CAS number because CAS has to be perfect. Any error in CAS will result in like not, you not getting your visa. So they have to make sure. So I got my pre-CAS on the 9th of July 2021, but I had a big issue. So what happened was um, on the, my passport, my mother's name was Sheila with a double A, S-H-E-E-L-A-A. But on my degree certificate, it was just single A, which was Sheila with a single A and passport as Sheila with double A, which did not match. The degree certificate and passport the details don't match, so we can't issue a cast for you. I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my God, because I was like so further ahead in the process. Like I was like, fine, finally I can apply for my visa. It's going to be sorted, but the names did not match. So they asked me to make a new final degree certificate with Mumbai University. I'm in Pune, COVID time, so I could not do that. So what I did was I went to a lawyer. I created an affidavit which stated that Sheila with a single A and Sheila with a double A is none other than the same person and which was signed by my mother and with a lot of stamps. And then I submitted that document to the university. And finally, on 23rd July 2021, I got my CAS number. So what I recommend to you is make sure before you submit your documents, everything is perfect. Your name and your passport, your Aadhaar card, your um, degree certificates, your 12th mark sheet, everything is the same. Your, your name, your mother's name, your last name, your address, everything has to be the same because otherwise you will have problems in your CAS. Okay, so you have your CAS number now. But even before you get your CAS number, I recommend you to start gathering your documents. Like go to the bank, make sure everything is in process because otherwise it's going to delay your process even more. So before we talk in detail about all of these things like the TB test or the bank details or how to fill your visa form, here's a list of everything you're going to need on the day of your visa application. So you need printouts of that. I'm going to talk about this in the part two video in more in detail but all of these documents you do need so just make sure you take a screenshot of that or um, come back to this video whenever you need it 
so this is what you need so the affidavit and things like that noc so it totally depends on the situation you are in so for example i didn't need an affidavit you might not need it so it totally depends but more or less this is what you need okay so you know what documents you need so to get all of the documents you need to start doing all the processes so the first thing you need to do is your tv test so for tv test you can't do it anywhere so there are some hospitals decided by the government by the uk government and indian government and you can only do it there like for example in pune there is only one hospital where you can do your tb test in bombay there are couple in delhi there are couple so you like you need to check where is the nearest place and you have to do it there so how does a tb appointment look like at least in pune so i'm going to be reading through my laptop because i don't quite remember exactly because it's been like more than a year but basically you need to book your tb test so you don't call them you send them a whatsapp message for ruby hospital pune so it might differ depending on where you are but during the peak time when everybody is applying for the visa the waiting time could be like 10 15 days so like you just need to buck up you need to start your process as soon as possible so that you can like be chill and you don't have to pay extra for priority visa so the prices for tb test vary again like for example in pune for ruby hall the tb test costed 3000 rupees while in mumbai there are options like 1500 rupees in bangalore is about 2000 rupees so it totally depends where you are So when you send in WhatsApp about your appointment, they respond to you with the date and time and everything like that. And they also send you like a list of things you might have to carry. So they send me two documents which I had to print out and fill out with my details. Then I had to carry my passport, a couple of photos and things like that. So it totally depends on which hospital you are at. So I won't go in detail, but you have to carry all of those documents to the hospital. So I had my appointment at 10 a.m. and I went to the hospital at 9:20. So um when I entered they did a basic screening of my temperature and all of that and then they took me to the second floor and after you fill the documents you are asked to go to a room where they check your weight and height and they make note of it and then you wait in the waiting area and after a long time you are asked to change into a gown so you have to like remove all of your clothes essentially and then ask to change into a gown which is provided by them so in the x-ray room there's like a big ass machine you just go there and you just stand for like couple of second there is this light which goes around literally within like 2 minutes you're done with it okay so uh literally it took me 2 minutes and then i came out and then again there was a lot of waiting after changing bag of course and then uh, after a lot of waiting we went to the doctor he just uh, looked at our reports he only asked us like do you have tb we were like no we don't have tb he was like okay cool you don't have tb he signed the documents and then we left and then after 4 5 hours we had to go back to the hospital to collect our certificate and that was pretty much it so let us talk about bank statements so you need to keep money in your account for at least 28 days before your visa appointment like for example i have my visa appointment today i should have money in my bank at least 28 days before that and another thing you remember is after 28 days are complete you only have like 31 days until you apply for your visa uh, or go to the vfs office to complete your formality so 28 days after 28 days 31 days you just remember that so um how much money you need to deposit in the bank it totally depends on your college fees whether you're staying in london or not so this is a standard set by the uk government this is the amount you might need to survive in the uk so because london is more expensive the money you would need in your bank is more like for example at least for 2021 london you need you needed 12006 pounds plus your college fees so my college fees was 29 lakhs so 29 plus 12 1000 whatever uh, i had to keep it in my bank for 28 days but if you're studying outside london you would need 9000 plus your college fees so whatever it might be your college fees might be 15 lakh 20 lakh 25 lakh it totally depends so this amount plus that so the first amount which is for example 9207 pounds it would include your accommodation your food and everything so it is like a standard set by the government and most often than not you might not end up spending that much because you're also doing part times there and things like that so to keep the money in your bank account you have two scenarios like my father did he sent all the money to my bank account which was under my name devyani so it was chill but on the other hand you can also put money in your parents accounts like if for example you have money in your father's account so in that scenario he has to make an noc your parents or your legal guardian have to make an noc which states that they are okay with sharing uh, the money or they are okay with their child or this person using their money while studying abroad and they have to submit an noc with your birth certificate So you need to carry this NOC and birth certificate to the visa office. So the next thing is you can either keep your money in a savings account or a FD account, fixed deposit account. 
so even in fixed deposit accounts you can make multiple fds with that amount so i made five fds with that amount but depends like whatever you want so let us look at the bank statements you have to submit to the visa office so these two documents are very very important so i'm going to show you in detail what all you need to include so that you don't make any other mistakes so let's just get through this so i have you know hidden a lot of details like the bank address my address and a lot of amount details but other than that the main information is still there so let us look at it so what i did was i divided my money in two in two accounts once one is a savings account and the other one is a fixed deposit account as you can see here so in the savings account if you have money in the savings account you have to generate a balance confirmation certificate so let us look at what we need so other than the proper header like the bank da -da -da, your name and your address and things like that what you need to have is like an account number which i have hidden your account title the type of account which is savings then the balance and figures which goes right here and the balance and words so this is very easy like for bank it's very easy to generate there was no issue in this one so along with that a proper stamp and which is signed by a bank manager it has to be there so uh, you can take a screenshot and like you know just uh, you can ask them to make the similar one whatever so uh, this is quite easy but for on the other hand for the fixed deposit it was a bit more complicated so what i did was the remaining money which was not in the savings account i put it in the fixed deposit but not just one fixed deposit like i did not make one um i don't know what it's called fixed deposit account but i divided the money into five parts so as you can see here there are five uh, fixed deposit accounts or whatever it's called <laughs> So for fixed deposits, you have to make a balance confirmation certificate like we did for the savings account as well as generate receipts. So let's go in detail. So for what in fixed deposit, what we have to include is, okay, this is the date requesting the bank. This is easy. You can take a screenshot and just re replicate that. But the key things you need to remember is you need to have your fixed deposit number. When did you put money on it? So this is dated. What date? Then what was the deposited amount? Like, for example, if I put thousand rupees so the, this amount will come here and a lot after the interest it maybe it becomes thousand like two thousand rupees i don't know thousand and ten rupees whatever so it comes in the maturity amount and when does the fixed deposit mature so all these things are very important this and if you scroll down you can see okay the deposit amount is this whatever in rupees and you also have to write the same amount in gbp so this and that this amount has to be same obviously like in convert to gbp and uh, it also says that okay the money is there in the account for more than 28 days so then um, for every entry over here a receipt has to be made okay so because there are five entries here one two three four five i had five receipts with me Okay, so in the receipt again, like my name, my address, the branch ID, then the amount, deposit amount in rupees, deposit date, all uh, the rate per and whatever amount is going to be in rupees. So here it's only in rupees, but here they have mentioned everything in GBP. So that's very convenient. So on the day of the visa, I had to take one document, one of this, one of this and five receipts and that's how it is so make sure like everything is perfect you can like slow down the video take screenshot but like or maybe just hand i don't know like do whatever but this has to be perfect but i personally had to tear up my documents like five six times because there were like stupid mistakes like they did not write the amount in gdp like in british pounds then i had to tear it then they messed up the date i had to tear it the sign was wrong like there were so many issues and finally i got my bank statements so i really recommend like even before like uh, if you can keep money in your account for a very long time you should like do it as soon as possible because there are a lot of mess ups in this and your bank accounts are damn 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 important so don't make sure you don't mess that up so now you finally have all of your documents ready from your passport, your cast number, your TV test, your bank statements and everything, your IELTS sheet and everything is ready. And now finally you can start applying for your visa. And that's it for this video. And if you have any further questions about the documents required, when is the waiting time, da, 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 anything, just feel free to comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. See you in the next video. Bye.